Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kristen Jezik, and I talk everything self-care so that you can live a self-care life. So if you are working on taking better care of yourself, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications every time I post a new video. This week is a little different, but I hope it will be really helpful, especially with everything that's going on. And I want to talk about something that I, I don't even know if everyone in my life knows about me, but for years of my life, I struggled with depression and anxiety that stopped me from doing a lot of things, having social situations or relationships, um, moving forward, getting out of my house sometimes. And I would cry for, at certain periods of my life, hours every single day. So I started kind of suffering with depression and anxiety when I was really young, but I think a lot of people can interpret that as angst or um, you know, hormones or whatever kids go through, but it was very real to me and it was a struggle throughout school. And then I remember my first two years of college, I think my first year of college, I just said to myself, you know, I need to see a therapist. I need to talk to someone because it's getting so bad. You know, I couldn't go to class and I couldn't do homework assignments and I didn't want to socialize. I just wanted to sleep all day. And so I went to see the therapist at the school at the time. I think I was 17 or 18. And after one meeting, which I honestly think was half an hour or 45 minutes, she suggested I be put on depression medication, which for me was, it was really hard to wrap my head around because at that time, this was 2007, a lot of people didn't talk about it, talk about depression medicine or um, depression or anxiety as something that was in the day-to-day -day life. I feel like more people are talking about it now, which is really good. But at that time, I think I really expected myself to push through it and kind of work through it on my own and not need drugs. And so I didn't, I didn't end up going on the depression medication at the time. And I actually didn't go back to the therapist, which I don't know if I should have. I mean, I didn't, so I'll say I shouldn't have, but I, I don't want to discourage people from finding a therapist that works for them, for them or talking to people because that can be really helpful. Um, but for me, I was, <laughs> I was depressed and I was anxious and I didn't want to take medicine and I didn't even have the courage to say that to someone else. I had really low self-esteem, a really low opinion of myself and I couldn't even face a health professional and say that I was uncomfortable doing that. Um, so I just kind of kept feeling what I was feeling, but just more determined to put a positive spin on things and get through things. And I kind of cycled in and out of depressive and anxious feelings and thoughts for a while and went to two, I had two more years of that college and I went to acting school in New York and living on my own in New York was something where I could isolate myself which made it much worse because I didn't have uh, people checking in on me every day. I didn't have roommates at the time. And it's something I think, I can't speak for other people, but it was something, it was a tool I used to kind of stay in that depression and anxiety. And I just didn't know how to get better. I didn't know how to get out of it. So that is the period of my life when I would cry for hours on end, hours every day I would come home um, and I tr didn't socialize a lot and I said it was because I was eating healthy and I didn't want to drink and there's certainly a lot of alcohol around New York, but I have always loved self-help, self-improvement. I think it's that inner desire to feel better and to get out of that depression and anxiety and nothing I did was really working long term. I tried eating really healthy. I tried working out. Um, you know, sometimes hours a day. I tried socializing, I tried dating, I tried 
talking to friends and family. I, um, you know, tried thinking my way into positive thoughts and feeling better, but then those negative thoughts would just overwhelm those. So it just didn't, it didn't make any lasting progress. And I ended up living in an area where I could kind of self isolate, whether it was New York or LA, where I didn't really have to face those things. So I started looking into coaching because I thought that might be a better alternative to help me than therapy would. Um, because I had had that experience with therapy and actually I had gone to another therapist later in my life who didn't prescribe drugs. Um, but again, I felt really uncomfortable speaking up for myself and really uncomfortable confiding in other people. And so it was, it was a struggle to even open up in that situation, which is not something I recommend, but, um, I do recommend never stopping looking because I think the through line for me was that I never stopped looking for what was going to work. And I might have been in that depression and anxiety and definitely there were periods of time where I didn't try to figure it out because I couldn't and it was just day to day. But eventually I got into coaching and really wanted to help people through coaching and I think really wanted to help myself. And I met with a coach to help myself and on the first time we met, he said, you know, you sound like you might like this person, Byron Katie. Why don't you look up her stuff on YouTube? She has a ton of free resources. It just sounds like something that might work for you. And I remember getting off the phone call with him because this was our first session and immediately Googling Byron Katie YouTube and starting to watch her working with people through the work, which if you don't know, is four questions and a turnaround. It's really simple. Um, I can give you the questions now, but I'll also write them below and link them below and link all of her information below. But the four questions are, is it true? Can you absolutely know it's true? How do you react when you believe the thought? And who would you be without the thought? And then you turn those thoughts around to the opposite, the other, and the self. Which might sound like a lot, but it is a really, really simple process. So simple, in fact, that after watching her do the work with some people, I filled out a worksheet which basically walks you through judging another person or a situation that you're really upset with. And my first worksheet was a worksheet on God. I was furious, angry, hurt, anything you can imagine with God for how my life was. And, and by no means did I have a terrible life. I just didn't know that at the time. And what I love about the work is that growing up being a Christian throughout my entire life, I was really nervous that questioning my thoughts would bring me away from God or would bring me away from my faith. And I think it was kind of a bold move to question God. But I think what's exciting about the work is that it is safe and it's just questions and a turnaround. And it doesn't say believe in a different philosophy or what you believe isn't true. For me, it was just an opportunity to look at it from different angles and to look at what I was thinking in a way that I wasn't able to before. Because until this point, I was kind of told or I told myself to just push through it and think positive and, you know, think happy thoughts, which didn't work for me because I would think these happy thoughts and then the negative thoughts would come and overpower those. And I did not know how to kind of gently work with the negative thoughts, which I was able to do with the work. So I did the work on God. <laughs> I said things like, God should care more about what I want. Um, God should help me. God should take care of me. At the time I wanted to be back in New York, I was in Cleveland. I said, God should get me to Cleveland. Uh, God doesn't understand me, all this stuff. And through questioning those and turning those around, I started realizing what it is I wasn't doing for myself and, you know, in my faith, what I wasn't doing for God. And my concern was so inward focused. I remember the turnaround, I should care, that God should care more about what I want. And I turned it around to, I should care more about what God wants. And I had just never thought of myself in a bigger sense of being a part of the world or a part of God's plan. It just had never occurred to me until I tried it or I looked at it through this way, through the work. 
And kind of a fun story is I remember questioning my thoughts and going from being completely depressed at the end of my work that morning to question my thoughts on God and just going out to dinner with my family and having one of the best meals of my life because I was so happy and so fulfilled and I could finally see some light. I could see what it was like to not be a slave to this banking and to not be suffering through what I was believing, which wasn't even true. And not only that, I felt like I had a path out of it. So we went out to dinner, it was a wonderful dinner, and I just felt joy from doing absolutely nothing. It was instantaneous and it was so addicting to question my thoughts like this. Anytime a depressive or an anxious thought came up, which happened so often at that time in my life, I was able to just sit down with a worksheet and I would fill out worksheet after worksheet after worksheet. I mean, I have a pile this big, I have files on my computer because at the time I didn't realize even subtle thoughts that you would think, oh, I would never think that or I would never say that. If you're believing them deep down, they're affecting how you live your life. They're affecting how you interact with your family and your loved ones and your friends and your career and your finances and your health and your body. It, it's amazing what these thoughts did to me and how they held me captive for so many years. And some key takeaways I took from doing the work, and I still continue to this day, I think I did my first worksheet in 2015, so five years ago now, is these thoughts that you have aren't personal. I didn't wake up one day and think, I want to have all these negative thoughts. I want to have all this fear. I want to have all this depression. I didn't wake up and think that to myself. Um... It's not personal to have a thought. You notice it kind of just pops in your head sometimes. You'll be walking along and just think a thought or you'll wake up in the middle of the night and think a thought. You didn't do that. It's not on purpose. It's not, it doesn't define you, you know, but sitting down and looking at what I was thinking and finding a way to question that really gave me that freedom. And it frees me up when I'm not suffering with these depressive or anxious thoughts. I can think those positive things and I can be present with my loved ones, be present with myself and make real positive change. And it's a tool that I think is so important and I continue to see its importance every single day. I heard a statistic from Byron Katie who created the questions and the turnaround on a podcast she did, I think in 2019, where she said Stanford was coming in and studying the effect of doing the work for nine days at her school on depression. And she gave a statistic that with therapy, there's a certain percentage of people who get better. With therapy and drugs, 64% of people get better, which is the best thing that people have right now. Or with doing the work for nine days at her school, 94 people, 94% of people who were suffering with depression saw an improvement. And when she was asked if that's really exciting for her, she said, this is nothing, I I'm going to paraphrase, so don't quote me on this, but she said, it's nothing I didn't know, but... Science can be really helpful in encouraging people to try it or to do it. And again, I'm paraphrasing, that's not her exact words. But I think if that encourages you to try this for any depressive or anxious thoughts that you're having, it's so worth it because I remember at the time I thought, oh my gosh, I wish I had found this sooner. But also through the work, I found like everything happens at the perfect time and everything kind of falls into place. <laughs> it's, it's not all like I have to control it or it's up to me, which is another benefit I think I found through the work. And it's amazing because people have done the work. They say, well, this is what you're gonna get out of it or what do you get out of it? And it's so different for every person. And there's things that you get or I got at the exact time I needed them, realizations I got. And it's not a one-time you know, fix all thing, but the more I work with my thoughts, the less and less of a rub there is and the less attachment I feel to those thoughts. And this is a really sensitive time. I see a lot of people struggling with depression and a lot of people struggling with anxiety. And I really wanted to be as transparent and open and honest as possible with my own journey because I didn't know there were other options. I thought it was therapy, drugs, you know, figuring it out, out on your own. I didn't know there was even a way to question my thoughts. 
And I think it's important that people talk about that and they know that, that that's available to them. So if me going through, through that and me sharing any of my experience can help you go to the work and go try that, then I think that is really worth it and really wonderful. Again, I love that Byron Katie, she makes everything available on her website. She has tons of YouTube videos doing the work. I did a video walking through a thought on how not to be afraid by using the work of Byron Katie. So if you wanna see someone walking through a thought or someone walking through a worksheet, you can check out that video or you can just search the work of Byron Katie and see her working with people and see how that's moved in her life. And if you wanna try it, she makes everything free on her website. So you can go find a worksheet, fill it out, she says, judge your neighbor, write it down, ask for questions, turn it around. But it really is that simple. If that doesn't make sense to you, um, reach out to me. Because I don't think I understood the process. It's something that in my life wasn't very cerebral. It was something I had to do. And the art of doing it, the practice of doing it is something that gives you something really unique for yourself. And, you know, she says, and I'll say, it's not for everybody. There's a million ways people feel better in their life. And I would never say stop going to therapy. I would never say stop taking drugs for any depression or anxiety. I'm not a medical professional in that way. But sharing what worked for me and what pulled me out of probably 24 or 25 years of depression and anxiety and debilitation from moving forward in my life was this tool. So... If you want to know more, comment below. If you found this helpful, if you tried the work, let me know. And if you have any questions, reach out to me in the comments below or reach out to me at my Instagram at Kristen Jezik and just ask me any of your questions. I will try to help in any way I can. I know this is a really sensitive time and this tool can be really great if you're having fears or any anxiety and depression about your work or your personal life at home or... Um, anything else, you know, the health pandemic that we're going through, just reach out to me, reach out to the people at thework.com. She, she has so many resources available. There's people who can do the work with you. And I will, of course, answer any questions that I can answer on my Instagram or here. And I really hope this helped you today. If you like this video, please like and comment below what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see certain examples of me going through the work, I have all my worksheets, so I'm happy to read some of my worksheets and go through some of my thoughts. I think if you're interested, my key topics were probably dating, relationships, uh, family, work, finances, health, my body, huge things around these issues that I had suffered with my whole life. And I will be happy to share them with you if that's going to help. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much. Again, subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications every time I post a self-care video. And I love you so much and I hope you be well.